At least there's no VAR in the championship. to Air of the Dog, the day after match review. And we're hoping for better news for the first episode of this, but in typical Sheffield United fashion, we start off with a loss to them bubble blowing c If you do like this video, if you do like our other content, we all know we're missing the vlogs. We want to get back to them as soon as possible uh, once this unspecified virus of unknown origin kind of clears off and we can start winning games again, we can get back vlogging and doing what we do best. But for now, you're stuck with me chatting. Lucky you. As I said though, if you do like the videos, go down there. Doing that YouTube thing again, stop it. If you do like the videos, go down there, subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you see all our notifications in the future. Subscribe to us on the social media, I'm pointing upwards this time. The actual match review is at the end. It's not what you're expecting in terms of match reviews. It's what we're gonna try and do quite often on the channel. Try and take a light-hearted approach. Try and take the sting out of defeat a little bit. Easy said than done. But before we get into the match review, let's have a look at all the weekend's results and the league table. Sorry. After you watch this video, if you're still looking to fill that blade shaped hole in your heart with some more fantastic United content, there are plenty of Chef United content creators out there who need you to view their stuff. Let's have a look what's coming out this week. Of course, Roy, aka Andrew, aka Panchero, aka Mr. A Million Names, will be doing his post match review from the West Ham fans. I'm sure, that'll make for smug reading. We've got our match preview coming up. And of course, Chef United, we have a very interesting podcast coming up. Dean Hammond. That one is not one to be missed. As always, you've got three great Chef United podcasts out there. I'm not saying that these are all the ones you should listen to. They're just the three that I listen to. And they're very, very good. We've got Blades Pod, Four Blades in a Pub, and the Tufty Club. Entertaining, quality stuff. Go listen to it. Yeah. We've got to get through to it sometime, aren't we? Is the match review. Little bubbles of misery. So before the game even started, we got news of a giant kick in the bollocks. The kind that hurts worse than a kick in the bollocks from a steel toe cap Dr. Martin boot attached to a local drunk girl with anger issues. As if our season hadn't thrown enough at us, John Fleck is now out of illness. We can only hope it's not the UNSPECIFIED VIRUS OF UNKNOWN ORIGIN Despite this, the Blades started the first couple of minutes fairly optimistically. Unfortunately, the ref decided, can't be having none of that, and he decided to give a penalty that was weaker than the Witherspoon's pint. Luckily though, for us, we finally got a bit of luck, and VAR noticed one of Dawson's stray pubes was sticking out of his shorts, and he was offside. Thanks VAR. Again, we started to look like we'd have a go. Did get an half decent chance to get the Blazer lead. Unfortunately, at his age, contortion isn't exactly his speciality, and he was unable to get a decent connection on the ball. In true Chef United fashion, the optimism lasted about as long as I do when I get my leg over after supping four litres of home brew from Mad Abdul's corner shop. We kept possession well, but we just didn't look threatening. A toddler wearing a bright unicorn onesie branding a cheese string would have caused more fear in that bubble blower's defence than our front line did. And the game carried on in a weird sense of limbo, really. No team looking likely to break the deadline, or at least that was the case up until the 40th minute where Norwood decided, hey, is that a play in the ball forward? Let's just gently stroke it into the opposition's path in a dangerous area. Why? Don't know. And of course, this leads to a penalty. And no stray pubes were going to overturn this fucker. Goal for the blowers, and we're into the break, 
one nil down. <coughs> Fuck off, football. Logical thing to do here would be to bring off Norwood. He's having a bit of a mare again, and by this point, it'd not only do the team good, but it'd do him good, you know. Help his mental state, possibly give him a respite, and a kick up the arse at the same time. Stop his niggling mistakes getting to his own head. But Wilder's like, nah, it'll be fine. Not a great plan. Predictably, start a second half, Norwood gives the ball away, quicker than my ex gives it away after a sniffle Lambrini. Game carries on in a state of limbo, and of course the blowers get a corner. The result was about as surprising as a result you'd get of leaving a kebab unguarded around Big Rob. Oh, no, no, no. To Dan, game over, and only now does a change get made. Common sense would say, bring on Burke, take Norwood off, put Dids in behind the front two. Of course, that's what common sense would say. What actually happens is, on comes McBurney to replace Norwood, with McBurney in an attacking midfield role. Why? Don't know. <coughs> Rest of the game played out like a sick, twisted version of Groundhog Day. Get into threatening positions, but firing more blanks than a Chernobyl sperm donor. Surely things couldn't get any worse, is what I would say if I hadn't already spent a quarter of a century watching Chef United. John Egan goes down and has to be stretched off. <coughs> Fuck off, football. Rest of the game's a load of nothing, other than the blowers grabbing another goal. Another defeat on the cards, and surely even the most appier clappers might have got to be doing shots of toilet duck by this stage. <coughs> Sheffield United's goal now surely has to be not to be the worst team in the league and finish third from bottom. And we've got to start that with Fulham next. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. I'm off for a pint. Na, 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 na.